So after X-Men Origins Wolverine and several rounds of therapy sessions later, we're finally getting what is promised to be the ultimate Wolverine experience. Does it live up to the hype? getting the film that is supposed to give us the Wolverine movie that fans have been longing for th since forever. This is a film directed by James Mangold, who a lot of you might remember as the director from 310 to Yuma. He also did Copland. Uh, he also gave us a nightmare uh, called Night and Day with Tom Cruise. It was awful. But his other credits are pretty good. He mostly does smaller films that are really good. They're more cult hits than they are smash hits. And he is the one who brings us the Wolverine, which is kind of funny because honestly, this movie is the movie that we have been waiting for. This film actually takes place after X-Men uh, 3, The Last Stand. I know, right? It's actually acknowledging that piece of shit. Wolverine with Hugh Jackman returning in the role for, I want to say it's the sixth time now. There's got to be like a, a world record for somebody playing the same character over and over and over and over and over again. If there is, Hugh Jackman just won it. In this film, Wolverine has gone into hiding. He's devastated by the fact that he had to, spoiler alert, kill Jean Grey in Last Stand. And he's also butthurt about the fact that Last Stand was probably one of the worst movies of all time. So after he's been in hiding for so long, he's found by a badass samurai warrior girl uh, by the name of Yukio, who is... Li okay, let's go ahead and get this out. Front Street. She's got that kind of demure, kind of kind of quiet look about her, uh, but she's anything but. I like her. She's like, hey, look, my grandfather, who, whose life you saved back in Nagasaki when they were dropping the bombs and bombing the fuck out of them, he's dying, he wants to fly you out to Japan so he can say his last goodbyes and pay his respects to you for saving his life all those years ago. And Wolverine's hesitant to do this, but he's like, mm, you know what, look, uh, I'm doing the caveman thing right now, fuck it, I'll go. And he does, but he finds himself trapped in some weird, uh... It's almost espionage spy-like intrigue. He finds out there's more going on beneath the surface than he had any idea. The guy pretty much is like, hey, look, you saved my life. I'm sitting here dying. Look, I know you want this all to end. You want to have a normal life where you can just go chill out, get married, have kids, and just die of natural causes. He's like, look, I can give that to you. All you gotta do is just pass your healing factor over to me. And then Wolverine, he thinks about it for like half a second before he's like, eh, no, no, mm -mm, no, can't do that. No, just won't happen. And everything just keeps going from there because despite the Wolverine's wishes, and yes, I did just call him the Wolverine. Ah, this movie just messed me up royally. Despite Logan's wishes, this is the most vulnerable we've seen him in any of the movies because in this film, he does ultimately get his healing factor. Not necessarily take it away, but it is... Uh, completely brought down to its lowest, lowest level. To where, I mean, yeah, he's still not dying from wounds that would normally kill a person, but he's not just running in, you know, claw swinging into bullet fire and shit like he normally would. This guy is taking shots to the gut, to the arm, to the leg, and he's actually being stunned by them. Wolverine is as close to being human as he's probably ever been in his life. And this actually changes the dynamic of how we view this character and how the action scenes with this character play out because now you know in any of the other movies you're like, man, Wolverine ain't gonna die. But in this one, there's that thing in the back of your head that goes, I don't know, man. He might go. The movie has great action sequences. The special effects are way better than what was in X-Men Origins Wolverine. I mean, by a sizable margin. There are a couple of times, though, where you could tell the special effects crew got lazy, and there was a couple of moments where uh, it wasn't as much as the special effects were bad, but there were some logic issues in there. Like, for instance, Wolverine gets stabbed with a samurai sword, and as he's pulling it out, there's, like, no blood on it whatsoever. It's just like, special effects crew just took the night off. They're like, fuck it. The one major issue I do have with this movie, all bullshit aside, is that it does hit some lulls. Night is so much of a, of a big deal, it's just the fact that the action sequences are so spread out in this movie, and one of the best ones is not even halfway into the movie. 
And there's moments where they're doing this character development thing and kind of getting you into Wolverine's, uh, you know, personality, letting you know more about his character, where he comes from, and how he and this, uh, this, you know, this guy that he saved in Nagasaki, how, you know, basically how they met and what, and how it shaped Wolverine, you know, for years to come. And that's all well and good, but the problem is it does drag a little bit. And it hits you in moments where you're really not, you just really not want it. You you might start looking at your watch and go, y'all need to get back to that train shit y'all were doing earlier, sorry. They kind of stick the landing on the ending. But they do make up for it with the mid credit stinger. Marvel, if I were you, I would take notes because this is how you do a stinger. Fuck that shit where, like, in Iron Man 3, where you're, you got Tony sitting on the couch and, and him talking to, to the Hulk. Fuck that. This is how you do it. So take notes. The acting in the movie is pretty good. There's some moments that there are some laughable dialogue moments, whatever. Ultimately, it's still a good, fun film. The pacing does kind of bring it down. And, you know, like I said, there are some... some really worn out comic book tropes in this movie but I still have to say it's not a perfect movie and it's not even like a mediocre movie or a middle of the road movie I will say that this is a gimme the blu-ray movie so guys you tell me what x-man would you like to see get his own spin-off movie don't forget to comment like and subscribe and stay tuned for more realist lounge